Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of DIY MMO where I make an MMO by myself on YouTube because it's not like I value my sanity or anything. Last episode, we uh, did a thing. Oh, let's click on that so the frame rate isn't shit. We did a thing where I could track the mouse cursor. Now you'll, you'll see uh, t tiles lit up here. It's almost as if they make a path. That's because today we're going to be working on pathfinding. And the easiest way to know if your pathfinding is on crack is to show what the path is in the game. So what I did is... this is wrong. Where is it? Okay, so I added a path and it's completely fake because I just made it up myself. But what it does is if, if the path is a path, if there is a path, then it draws the path, basically, like it draws the mouse position. It's it's not very complex, I admit. But what we want is for a pathfinder to give us a path and not to make a path ourselves, because that is not very useful. Also, I have decided to not keep up with the tutorial style videos because nobody said they didn't like it. Nobody said they did like it, so basically nobody said anything. But the views were lots lower, so that sucks. So I'm going back to the usual format of me rambling on camera. Right, so today we are doing an A star thing. Now, A star, I'm not gonna explain A star because, first of all, I really can't. I don't quite understand how it works. Well, I understand the concept, I don't understand the implementation. Fortunately, I have this A star class, which is like a generic implementation of A star that I made ages ago. It's the same one from Midboss, actually. So that's interesting for people who follow Midboss, and you should. Um, so this, I'm not even, I'm not even, it just, it does a thing. Just, just go with that. Just go with it doing a thing. But it needs path nodes. Now, usually A star implementations are focused like on a 2D grid, which is fine, but we have a 3D world, so that's not going to work very well. The thing is that very few people seem to realize is that A star can work in any kind of um, chart, basically. If you, if you have nodes and you know how the nodes are connected to other nodes, then you can do an A star over it. So I'm going to quickly run you through what all this stuff means. So get neighbors is a function that returns a set of, of nodes that neighbor this node. So in a grid, that's like the eight tiles around a tile. It also sends the closed list because if a node is on a closed list, then you don't want to return it. And it gives you the destination. Oh, you pass it the destination. And, uh, every node has a parent except for the starting node. Then every node has a path length. This is just a temporary variable that we set on a node as we're, you know, going around finding the shortest path, so it's not that interesting. Same with estimated length. Estimated length is, I think, the path length and then uh, the heuristic or something. Now, the heuristic is the interesting thing. So you have a heuristic here and a calculate heuristic there. Um, this is just an optimization thing. I call calculate heuristic once and then I can keep getting the heuristic value instead of recalculating everything every time I need a heuristic. Now, a heuristic is basically a best guess in an algorithm where you're trying to find a, a, the mostly optimal solution because you can't have like the exact best solution always. You can use a heuristic to speed up the process by First, narrowing down candidates for the best solution by guesstimating in a much more efficient way if they're even close. So in a 2D grid, <coughs> excuse me. So in a 2D grid, a heuristic could be like if there's a tile here and then there's a diagonal tile there, it'll, it'll just sum up these two distances as a guess as to how far away this tile is. And the cost to move to, well, we're just going to keep 
keep that normal because we don't really have tiles. This is for like tiles if it if you're doing like a, a 4x game or something and certain tiles slow you down like in Civ. Like if you're in a forest then um, you want to have a higher cost to move to and that way people will avoid forests if they can go way faster across a road. Okay, so we need to basically make an implementation of this. Now I have a path node. This is actually also part of my pathfinding code that I used before. This is for a 2D grid. So you can, it has a grid provider that says out of bounds, which means like, is it out of bounds? Um, you can use this to limit the area of the pathfinding. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this. Traversable is also like, well, you can't walk on water. So that's a thing. And reachable is, is like, well, it might be a wall, the position you're trying to get to. But if you can get next to the wall and you could theoretically reach the wall, then you're at your, your um, destination. So we need to basically convert this little class into something that works with our game. And um, I'm, I'm going to be uh, looking at how to do that because I haven't really prepared anything, so I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so the A-star class, I haven't looked at this coding years, just so you all know. The A-star class does not do anything. Oh, okay, so I just made make an A star with the star and a goal, and then I make these with my own path nodes, which have the grid provider. Okay. That, that'll that work. Um, so we're just going to keep using this for now. It's not a grid provider, so we're going to just rename this to provider. Or not. You know, the, the Visual Studio, it's not like, like I I want you to work properly. Ugh. Okay, rename. Good, good, good. So we're giving it the grid provider and then we have an X and a Y coordinate. Um, we probably want this to be a uh, vector 3, I think. Probably. Like, part of the problem with doing everything in vector 3s is... Well, it's not really a problem. I don't think there's like a, a an accuracy, floating point accuracy error on the 0 0.5 axis. But it does worry me. So I'm not quite sure what to do with that. But we're gonna we're gonna do like doubles, the Y and then in Z, I guess, and then just rename this to Z. And then double Y. Now this doesn't matter too much. Is it like we're gonna be changing this at some point anyway. Um, Okie dokie. We're gonna be changing this at some point anyway. But um, it's just more like I've never done a three D A star algorithm before, so it's basically getting this down conceptually if you know what I mean. So we can still use this because logically going from one tile to a, a, a neighboring tile is still going to be on the 2D grid. You just need to have some extra code to see if they're on the same plane. So let's, let's uh, modify this. So it skips the middle tile, which is very sensible. And then it creates a node here, and then does a whole new new stuff. Let's also, um, before I forget, do another constructor. One that just takes... Hmm. Do we want this to be doubles? Yes, probably. Just gonna mess everything up, but that's okay. We can deal with that. Factor 3 pos. Um, oh wait, this, yeah, and then pos.x, pos.y, pos.z, 
grid. Yay, we have a constructor. Now this is gonna be completely bonkers and fail, but we're just gonna do this. And then we fixed it. It's amazing. We also need to change this to SZ. Um, and then we need to change this to TZ. Okay. If it's not out of bounds and it's not in the close list, then we're gonna just comment this out because this is kind of messy. This is messier than it should be so that you can get into a wall or like next to a wall that you're going into, but eh. So this needs to be like double X, double Y, double Z. Um, the parent's okay. Path length is fine. Heuristic is fine. Estimated length is fine. Cost of move is... Hmm. We might want to increase the cost of move for, for going vertical, but probably not. Add cost to move to go vertical. I do think that having my, my thought process as I go through all this is more useful than me doing trying to do stunted tutorial girls. Okay, straight cost. Um, yay. What is the straight cost? That's 10 and diagonal cost is 14. Okay. Wait, wait. Oh, because the heuristic is an integer. Okay. We also want to... That is not, this is not what I want at all. It's, uh, no. It's... Oh, this is also not what I want at all. So that is good that I caught that. Otherwise, we would have been in trouble. Would have been a bit of a pickle. X, Y, and Z. Okay. So this needs to be Y and this needs to be Z and then none of these need to be integers. And this is a point. So this needs to be vector three, X, yeah. This is what you get when you reuse code to modify it. You have to um, modify a lot of things. X or Y or Z. Good job, good job guys. What do you mean can't be? Oh, that sucks. Well, then we'll just do it like that. That'll work. Oh, and then we probably need to, because this is I equatable, isn't it? Yeah, it's I equatable. You bastard. So, yeah, if it's not now, and the Y is the Y, and Z is the Z. So that's what we need. What we need. That is definitely what we need. So have we done everything now? All the little maintenance stuff. Wait, this is also wrong. So this is Y minus Y and then Z minus Z. We might want to change the heuristic a little bit, but honestly, it's probably not worth it. So let's just do an integer there. So the heuristic is basically the distance in the x coordinate plus the disti distance in the y coordinate plus the distance in the z coordinate. It's very simple. Now why I say that we might want to change this is, first of all, there is, if a tile is within 0.5 of Z, then there is no actual cost to move to that tile as opposed to a tile that is level. So we might want to negate that and then any remaining distance, oh uh, actually I'm talking about Z, I meant Y, so up and down. So if it's level, or within 0.5, like half a tile in height, then it doesn't cost anything extra. But if it's more than that, we might uh, want to increase this value in the heuristic because theoretically, if you could go straight up, 
it would be the same as if you could go straight left, but you can't. So it's not. So we might want to penalise that. In fact, let's just do that because I've talked about it enough now. Um, okay, so if this is... Hmm, we'll, have to, we'll have to height diff. So if the difference in height is 0 0.5 or less, then the difference is 0. Otherwise, it's height diff minus 0 0.5. I don't need to do that, but I'm just going to anyway. Times 3 or something. Now, because we're just guesstimating that this... It doesn't, like, I could do two, I could do five, I could do ten, but three, uh, yeah, three seems fine. Three seems completely fine. We can't really test if this is going to work out well because we don't actually have an over and an understate yet, but, you know, that, yeah. Um, okay, so we finally, we can revisit this. So this needs to be TX, TY, and TZ. I don't have a TY. Of course I don't. Let's just, let's just do, do, do this. Let's just completely comment this out so I don't, because this is not going to be what we want. What we want is going to be a meme, even if I die trying to make it one. So, if not provider dot out of bounds. I don't know if I want this to be a, a, a node thing. I can just do double X double Z. So X TX TZ. Okay, so only do this if it's if it's not out of bounds. And then also only do that if we haven't added the no to the closed list. And then I need to think about what the hell I'm going to be doing. What do you mean no doesn't exist? Oh, because, yeah. Okay, we can do that. We can create the node here and then pass it there. Oh, because we don't have a TY. Um... Yeah, because cause we don't know what actually the node is that we can do. So in between here, we need to we need to create create determine if there is a node and create it. So that's what we need to do. Um, how do we do that? I'm gonna do a cut here because I don't know how to do this. Be right back. So I've made some uh, adjust adjustments. I'm going to run you through the code, so we no longer have traversable because right now that doesn't we can't give any meaning to that. So I've just commented it out. Um, I added a get platforms function, which, as the summary reads, returns a list of platforms with space to stand on for an entity with specified height. So basically, it goes through the map and it checks will an entity of height something fit in here um and that's what we can well, right now we don't have like overpasses or anything we don't have multiple floors but eventually we will so i just made this in, ta in anticipation of what we're gonna do in the future so if you scroll down um we're back in the get neighbors function we're still like looking one x and z around ourselves we're still calling out of bounds, and then once we're in bounds, we determine if there is a node and create it. So we get the height, which is get platforms, and we give it a height. I had this set to 0 0.9, but eventually I realized if if my player height is like 0 0.9 and they're dropping down half a half a unit in game, then I want to add 0 0.5 to that because that's half a unit in game. So they'll always fit. This is kind of a shortcut, 
I should probably put that in, in the, the um, reachable function, but like I said, this is half implemented, so I'm not even going to bother. If this ever becomes a problem, I can just fix it. I can just do it properly then, when I know how to do it properly, because all the other stuff will be implemented. Okay, so for every height in there, we... Um, so you have like multiple platforms, so it says, okay, you can stand here on that tile and you can stand here and then you can stand away up there or something. Now, what we do is we create a node and then we ask it, okay, can we reach that platform from where we are? If it says yes, then we check if that node hasn't been closed already. If it hasn't, we add it to the set and then we return all of those neighbors. So it's not really that complicated, actually, to make a 3D um, uh, pathfinding algorithm. Did I change anything here? No, I don't think I did. Okay, so that's that. We didn't change anything in here because this is generic and it doesn't need to know about anything. We did change the map. So we implemented the, I, the interface for the world provider. I renamed it to world provider. Um, and that's here in this region. So you, I do region world provider, so you can just collapse it. Um, it has the out of bounds function, which is simple just if it's out of bounds. Um, then it has reachable, and this is kind of kind of a hack. Like, but we don't have any walls or anything. So right now, reachable just checks if the height difference it's less than 0 0.55. I add like the, the, the additional 5 just to prevent like floating point errors. But basically this means like if it's equal to or less than... Actually, let's put that there. If it's equal to or less than half a unit, then yeah, you can reach it. And otherwise, no, it's too high. You can't get there from, from where you're going. Um, ideally, I should probably check if the, these are actual neighbors but you're not supposed to call this function if you if these are not neighbors so if you're calling that function now you're doing it wrong and it may be better to just leave it without that check to have it more optimized because pathfinding can be a bit of a resource hog if you know what I mean and then no, get platforms well we don't have any like buildings yet or anything so it just returns yield return, which is an I enumerable. So this is enumeration, so you can step through it, which we're not doing, but you could. Um, so it just yield returns, just returns a, a collection of that one value, the height at that tile. Um, then in the container, we added the path. So no, we didn't add the path. We didn't add anything up there. I uh, don't mind. Uh, uh, just, just ignore me. I'm an idiot. Um, okay, we we bounce the left mouse button to pathfind. So pathfind is this function here. If the mouse position has a value, if it doesn't, we're not we're not going to try pathfind because that is ridiculous. It'll create a new A star class. For the starting node, right now I'm just using the engine.camera.position.x and then the height of where the camera is and then the, the camera position.z and the, the provider is the map that we have and then the goal target position is just the mouse position. Okay, then we get to we get a stack. A stack is a last in, first out. So the, it's basically uh, one of those towers, like where you put the rings on. The last ring you put on is the last ring you get back off if you try and clear it. We tell the A star algorithm to run. We probably want to give this a max passes thing, but I didn't for now because it's not that important. We can add it later. If we get a value back, then stack is going to be not nil and count is going to be greater than zero. Then we basically convert the stack into a list of th vector three positions. This is basic says for every item in the stack, create a vector three with the position of that item and then convert the whole thing to a list. So we set the path. One last thing before I show you the results is 
Okay, yeah, we set the camera position, because this is the on location message. Uh, filming on location. And I just created a little test formation of higher terrain, so you could actually see that it, like, path finds its way up a hill. So let's see how that works. So this is the little path. So if I click here, or there, or there, it's all fine. It just creates a path instantly. And it's amazing. Now, if I click here, it's going to have to go around that thing there. So, okay, you can't really see the path behind it. But if I click here, you can. So it goes around here, because it can't get up here. One unit. These are one unit high. It's too much. But say I want to get up here, and I click there, then I can. Because even though you can't get up here, you can get up here from there. So we have pathfinding, so theoretically we could start moving our, our character around. Which is amazing, and I think if I move the... Yeah, if I move the, the thing, then it'll work. I mean, it's obviously a little bit clunky right now. So inversely, if I, if I move the camera up here... Uh, yeah, let's just fake that, and I click here, then it has to go down, because it can't drop down. Eventually I may... No, I don't think I want people jumping off ledges, it's just it creates more problems than, than it's worth, really. So yeah, this is uh, pathfinding. This is kind of weird, because I'm using the diagonal cost everywhere for the cost to move, because there is no difference right now in cost of movement, but eventually there should be. Like, a diagonal is going to be the square root of 2, so that's longer than 1, because the square root of 2 is, is longer than 1, so it'll should probably take longer to move diagonal than it does to move straight. Right now it's not taking that into consideration so you can get wonky paths where it tries to go there and then here and then, you know, down there. I don't know why it actually does that. Oh, that's interesting. This path doesn't do it. That path does. Yeah, whatever. It's not a problem. So, that's uh, 3D pathfinding. Not as complicated as I thought it would be. But then again, we don't really have 3D pathfinding yet. We have kind of a, a prototype of 3D pathfinding that isn't quite 3D pathfinding yet. But still, you know, better than I feared. Anyway, that's uh, going to be all for today. Um, thank you all for watching, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!